What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the Google Pixel 6 Pro. What is going on everyone? Jason here and today we're taking a full in-depth look at one of the most exciting phones of the year, the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Yes, finally, the stranglehold embargo that all of us reviewers are held under by gunpoint has finally ended, and we can now openly share all the ins and outs of this unique device, as well as our personal thoughts on all the features. Now, no doubt there is a ton of interest in the Pixel 6 Pro, as it is a complete overhaul in terms of design, hardware, and specs. And with this offering, it's pretty clear that Google is making a play at competing with the big boys, like Apple and Samsung in the ultra-competitive pro smartphone space, something it's never done before. Now that's pretty ambitious, and let's face it, based on what Google had been putting out in their Pixel lineup up to this point, it didn't exactly drive too much initial confidence. So today I want to go over in detail how my experience has been with the new Google Pixel 6 Pro, I'm going to cover its core features and what it brings to the table in comparison to the other big players, to ultimately help answer the question, does the Pixel 6 Pro live up to the hype? Now before we get into the review, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, it really does help me out. And in case you're a tech junkie like me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the reviews. And before I jump into it, I have a real quick question. Which do you think is a better buy? The new Pixel 6 Pro or the non-Pro Pixel 6? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, first let's deep dive into the all new physical design. I mean, just take a look at the difference between the Pixel 5, Google's last quote-unquote flagship phone, to the completely changed and upgraded Pixel 6 Pro. It's seriously a night and day difference, and in mostly a good way. Google finally adopted the design playbook that most premium top-end phones follow when it comes to build material. You get a glass-on-glass -glass design, with a very posh alloy frame as this is the Pro model, with this massive, slightly edged full-screen display with minimal bezels for that forehead and chin. And man, I have to give it to Google. This phone looks and feels great. The main thing I've focused on the past few days I've had this phone is quality, and even though pixels of the past have always taken a utility over design approach, overall I'm extremely impressed at how well this phone is put together. The glass on both the front and back blends seamlessly into the phone's chassis, the ultra clicky buttons have a brush finish to give some nice subtle contrast to the otherwise polished frame, the edges of the display are just deep enough to give you that infinity spillover look without making the phone difficult to hold, and Google didn't skimp out on the minor details. You have the ultra durable Gorilla Glass Victus on both the front and back glass panels, and the Pixel 6 Pro has an IP68 dust and water resistance rating. It also uses a fingerprint resistant coating on the back that I have to say is pretty effective. Considering that this does have a glossy finish, it's way better at masking fingerprints than other competitors, which I have to say is pretty nice. Now all of this sounds pretty standard when it comes to top-end smartphones, and I won't lie, the front of the phone does look pretty familiar and nothing that I would say is unique, but Google went a little extra on the back to make sure that people know that you're rocking a Pixel. And the primary way they went about doing that was going with this impossible to ignore camera housing that I think it's fair to say is unlike any other. It spans across the entire width of the phone and sticks out a ton, it's blacked out which in this case provides some good clash against the cloudy white colorway, and is flanked with what seems to be the same alloy as the frame. And at first, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I mean, it's so different than anything I've seen up to this point. But I gotta say, I got used to it pretty quick, and now I really like it. I appreciate that Google wants this phone to stand out, and I feel as though this gives the Pixel 6 Pro a modern, industrial look that ultimately works really well. At the end of the day, this phone is extremely well put together and feels outstanding in the hand. Again, a night and day difference compared to what the Pixels have been up to this point. It's in a totally different league, and I do feel as though it meets the standard of being deemed a bona fide top-end premium device. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the Pixel 6 Pro size when talking about physical design. This is a pretty large form factor. Dimensionally, it's taller than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is a huge phone, and quite a deviation from the more compact dimensions of the Pixel 5, which I know many people found endearing. I personally like the size of the Pixel 6 Pro. It's surprisingly easy to handle because the width isn't overbearing and the round edges of the frame make it more comfortable to grip. I do kind of wish that the button placement was inverted, but at the end of the day, I think it's a pretty comfortable device considering its large size. And one of the primary reasons why I may be more tolerant of the larger dimensions is because of one of the star components of the Pixel 6 Pro. It's equipped with a massive 6.7 inch QHD OLED panel coming in at a resolution of 1330 by 3120, making for about 512 pixels per inch. And man, it looks super nice. It can get really bright, content comes off razor sharp, and HDR content looks pretty incredible on this phone. I think what makes the display really enjoyable in addition to being a quality panel is how immersive it is. 
Google went with a single hole punch cutout for the front facing camera for a minimal intrusion here. Plus the edge design makes the sides look like they're kind of bezel-less. And even the small chin at the base of the display is minimal to say the least. Pair that with the large size, and it makes for a very immersive user experience. Watching videos and playing games is pretty fantastic on the Pixel 6 Pro. And another reason why is because the speakers are pretty good on this phone as well. You get stereo sound with one speaker firing at the rear of the phone, and one that fires at you through the display. I'll be honest, they're not as robust and full sounding as what's coming out of the latest iPhones, but they can get pretty loud and it definitely makes content consumption a lot better. Google also finally implemented an in-display fingerprint reader on the Pixel 6 Pro, which helps keep the overall aesthetic of this phone really clean. It's an optical sensor which may not be as secure as the ultrasonic ones that the one Samsung uses, but it's easy to set up and relatively fast to authenticate. And when it comes to the minor details, again Google didn't skimp on the things that matter. Case in point, this display has a variable 120Hz refresh rate, the first to make its way to a Pixel, and this provides noticeably smoother navigation around the phone's UI and certain apps, and really elevates how you interact with this phone. Now my testing, by and large most apps were able to leverage the higher frame rates, but they're not all there yet. Twitter is one that I noticed feels as though it may not have been updated yet. Scrolling is really jittery here. I was worried that this might be an issue with the display itself, but it seems to be contained on just this app, as others are noticeably silky smooth. Now my primary concern on the display was battery life. High refresh rate panels require more power in order to operate, and I was getting flashbacks of the disastrous Pixel 4 XL. That was Google's first attempt at having a high refresh rate display, and it basically wiped out batteries so fast on that phone, it was just horrible. And to Google's credit, it significantly improved that issue with the Pixel 5, but I was still nervous about how the Pixel 6 Pro would handle battery life with the display that's pretty power hungry. And I'm happy to say in my short few days of testing, the battery life has held up really well. On a full charge, I could comfortably get through an entire day without needing to re-up, even when I'm pushing the phone pretty hard, and I've had no noticeable throttling of the high refresh rate display, which is nice. I mean, the Pixel 6 Pro is rocking a pretty hefty 5000 mAh battery, so it's not the biggest surprise that it can last a while. Now another reason why the Pixel 6 Pro does well with battery life is likely due to another major new component to this phone, and that's Google's in-house Tensor chip. This processor is custom designed to integrate with the software, and there was a lot of emphasis on efficiency, so Tensor not only provides significantly more horsepower, but it also does it in a way that's far more power efficient than anything Google has used in the past. And it allows the Pixel 6 Pro to be far more capable. Android 12 runs buttery smooth with Tensor as its power source, spec intensive gaming is no problem and stutter free, and no idea if this is even tied to the updated chip. But man, this phone has a pretty fantastic haptic engine. This is the best haptics I've felt on any Android device, and it's noticeable right away. Plus, Google introduced some more spec demanding features that are pretty impressive. One of my favorite features of this phone is their new Material U UI. It has these themed icons that automatically adjust colors based on the colors of your wallpaper, and I think it looks super clean. It is a beta though, and it only currently has these themed icons for Google apps, but it can make your phone look really cool. Also, Google made some pretty strong leaps in their Google Translate app that essentially uses dictation to capture what you're saying and almost immediately have it translated to a different language. You could then have that translated text read out loud, and honestly, it's pretty mind-blowing how well it works. 저는 현재 새로운 Pixel 6 스마트폰에서 구글 번역을 테스트하고 있습니다. The translation is pretty spot on, and it does a really impressive job of sounding normal when being read aloud. It actually sounds like a native speaker speaking the language, with all the nuances with the timing and dictation. It's seriously kind of scary how good it works. Now another area of performance that Google really focused on with the Pixel 6 Pro is security. Not only is it equipped with the Titan M2 security code processor, Google is providing 5 years of security updates with the Pixel 6, which is pretty major. Now all that is great, but I know for me the primary area in which I was curious to see how Tensor enhanced performance on the Pixel 6 Pro is in their cameras. And to start with the hardware, continuing on with the theme of going true flagship on this one, Google equipped their latest phone with a premium set of cameras. You get a primary wide-angle 50 megapixel camera that has one of the largest sensors on any smartphone. You also get a 12 megapixel ultra-wide camera, a 48 megapixel 4x telephoto zoom, and a laser autofocus sensor to round out the hardware on the back. You also get an 11 megapixel selfie camera, and let's start there. The selfies coming out of the Pixel 6 Pro look pretty great, the image is sharp, you get really rich colors, and you still get that signature contrast heavy look that so many people like. 
One area where I saw some noticeable improvements is with the portrait mode. Edge detection is way better than before, even in tough lighting conditions. And though it does process faster, you still don't get a portrait live view when in portrait mode. You're stuck with the normal unblurred background when setting up the shot. And even though it's not the biggest deal, I was hoping that Tensor would have enough power to make that change. The end product still looks great though, and skin tones do come out a little bit better than previous models. And these selfies look pretty great. And when it comes to the still images on the cameras on the rear, again, the quality is pretty outstanding. The best way that I can describe it is that the pictures look like perfectly edited photos that require a lot of fine tuning. Everything is focused right, the colors are punchy and well graded, the dynamic range is outstanding. You get all that and all you have to do is press the shutter button. As the sensor is so large on the primary wide angle camera, it does perform better in low light which is great to see. The ultra wide and the telephoto zoom also perform very well, and it's great to have this level of versatility on a pixel. Now I did notice that there was a slight difference in color temperature between the primary and the ultra wide camera. You can see when I flip to the ultra wide, there's a stronger magenta hue, and when I flip back to the main camera, it goes back to being a more greenish hue. It doesn't really impact the final image too much, but it is something that I noticed. Another thing that I noticed is that the camera app is not the smoothest. It's a bit jumpy, especially when switching between lenses, and I'm hoping that this is just a buggy version of Android 12, but the cameras have either completely washed out or frozen up on me multiple times, again mainly when I'm switching between cameras. If I exit the app and come back it works again, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. Hopefully this could be solved with a simple software update. Now one of the most I gotta see it to believe it things Google announced that the Pixel 6 Pro could do is a new computational software feature called Magic Eraser. This essentially allows users to erase unwanted objects in a photo, and I was super pessimistic about this one, really seemed too good to be true, but when I actually tried it out, man I was kind of blown away at how well it can work. All you have to do is go to an image in your photos, I'm gonna click on edit, and then go to tools, and then click on magic eraser. And once you do, the pixel will automatically analyze the image for things that you may want to erase. Once it does, all you have to do is click on the suggested parts you want gone, and dude, it really disappears. You could also manually circle objects you want out, and it works pretty well. It's not nearly as accurate doing it this way, but man, I'm a lot more impressed at this feature than I thought it would be. It's definitely not perfect, but I think what makes it compelling is that I can see this feature being really useful in a pinch when you're looking to just get that one photobomber out of the way. It does a good enough job where most won't notice any imperfections unless they're really looking for it. And when it comes to overall image quality, I've said this before about pixels and it's the same for the Pixel 6 Pro, it's really hard to get a bad looking photo on this phone. These are some of the best stills I've seen coming out of any device right now. And it's great that anyone is able to quickly and easily get fantastic images like this with just a touch of a button. Now I will say if I'm being totally honest, the image quality is not what I would consider a major leap in comparison to what the pixels could already do up to this point. Yes, the pictures come out a bit more refined, but Google stuck to their signature look and feel when it comes to image processing. And look, I don't even think that's a bad thing. I mean, if you've had the secret sauce that everyone seems to like since the past, there's really no reason to change it if it's not broken. So even if it's just improvements in low light and better hardware, I still think that the Pixel 6 Pro produces some of the best still image quality in the game today. Now I anticipated that would be true. Google seems to have the computational photography thing down to a T, so not surprised that they're still bringing the heat in that department. But the major area in which the cameras needed to improve on the Pixel is its video shooting capability. Video coming out of the Pixels have never been that great, especially when you compare it to the stellar pictures the phone is able to produce, and there are a lot of hopes that Tensor is able to lift the video quality up to that same level. Let's start with the front facing camera. You can tell that the video is way sharper than before, better color rendition and dynamic range, it's pretty damn impressive. When it comes to 4K video at the main camera, it's a very similar story in that it's noticeably sharper than what pixels were pumping out before, colors are fuller and not as flat, and it's particularly better at handling wide angle shots where you have a lot more in the frame. It's definitely not at the level what the iPhone is able to produce when it comes to video, which honestly I would have been surprised if it did because no one's even close, but what we're seeing here in my opinion is a pretty strong improvement. Overall, I have to say again that I'm pretty impressed at what Google has put together with this phone. The Pixel 6 Pro is a complete transformation of the Pixel lineup, and it delivers on many of the key areas it needed to deliver on. And I think one of the smartest things Google did was price this phone at $899. I was worried that the phone would come in closer or even over the $1000 mark, which I think would have made this phone a much harder buy. At $899, you're getting a premium phone when it comes to build and form factor, some of the best cameras on any phone right now, and no doubt the best Android software experience available today. That's pretty reasonable if you ask me, and again impressive that Google was able to meet expectations on so many of those marks. 
Now is it enough to make it a competitor against the Galaxy line or the iPhones? It's hard to say. I think it's way better positioned now than it was in the past. But Google has to be ready to play the long game here and focus on consistency if it wants to play in the major leagues. That said, the Pixel 6 Pro in my opinion is a very strong statement that I'm sure is going to get a lot of attention, and I can totally understand why. But hey, that's just me, and I want to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think of the Pixel 6 Pro? Do you think it has a chance to compete with the big boys? Or do you think it's still not good enough? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys found it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.